Right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode where I've got a car finally to review again after a few months of uh, press fleets being closed. Thank you for taking the time to join me. As you can see here, I've got a 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. Uh, I don't do a lot of plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, so uh, usually I stick to all electrics, but on occasion where I think it's warranted, I try to get some of those out because I know that those are options for many people. So welcome to the show. Let me tell you a little bit about this 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. Now, Toyota's RAV4 Prime is the best-selling SUV in Canada and probably in other parts of the world. It's done very, very well as a traditional model line. New for 2021, however, is a plug-in hybrid variant, as I mentioned earlier. Now, what's made the RAV4 so popular is obviously its size. It's a mid-size, small to mid-size SUV with a lot of features, and of course, it's got the Toyota build quality and brand recognition to go with it. I really, I know that Toyota is slowly taking steps in the, into the all-electric battery arena, but this is one step that gets them closer there, in my opinion. The body is all new for this year as far as the design and a lot of the decor around it. As you can see, it's a nice looking machine. It's a little higher, in my opinion, than the older uh, RAV4s. It sits a little higher, and it does feel a bit more truck-like versus car-like in its handling and the way uh, that you sit. You sit pretty high, so you have a nice uh, driving position to see where you're going. It sports new headlights, front lower spoiler, uh, unique vertical LED accents, and so forth. It comes in two trims, trim levels. Now, for the EV portion of this vehicle, it does have an 18.1 kilowatt hour battery pack, which, in my opinion, is a good size. I'd like to see more, of course, but for plug-in hybrids, uh, it's a pretty decent size. It's rated at 68 kilometers here in Canada, 42 miles for the uh, countries that use that, which is decent for daily use case. It's not bad. Uh, right now, uh, I'm bundled up today because all of a sudden the temperature's dropped and the wind picked up and it's uh, minus uh, 10 Celsius here at the wind chill, of course, on the day that I need to film. So I'm bundled up and even on today, I'm still getting about 44, 45 kilometers of all electric range. It does have the ability to drive in all electric or into a hybrid mode, which it'll bounce around uh, compared, you know, use it, utilizing the gas engine, the EV motor and so forth. And then once the battery is depleted, it'll keep going on the gas engine. The engine is a 2.5 uh, liter four cylinder. It's got two electric motors, one on each axle. So this is an all wheel drive, automatic all wheel drive variant of it, which means it just automatically selects a wheel slippage and applies the torque accordingly. Now between the electric motors and that engine, it does combine for a total of 302 horsepower. In EV mode only, it's a little laxy-daisy. However, I have been running it in eco mode. So in all fairness, I haven't really tried to push the vehicle. I've been trying to eke out mileage and kilometers versus uh, getting around the city in a faster way. Charging takes about 12 hours if you're just using a 110 plug for the battery or two and a half hours on a level two charger or 240, so, uh, which does support up to 6.6 .6 kilowatts of level two charging. Now all that horsepower and torque that I mentioned will get you from zero to 60, uh, two miles an hour or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in about 5.8 seconds. Decent for a vehicle of this class. Now with regards to the interior, it's nicely equipped. It's very comfortable. The build quality is excellent. No squeaks and rattles and uh, all that kind of stuff. It is a Toyota vehicle and they do build them quite fine. Uh, some of the highlights, it's a seven inch multi-information uh, display for the driver, coupled with an eight inch uh, touch screen for audio, nav, all that kind of stuff. You know, the eight inches seems a little outdated uh, compared to some of the stuff out there, but it's fully function. I even tested the voice commands to navigate home and it understood me in the first time uh, time when I you know, articulated an address and get me there. It worked really, really well. So it may, may not look that modern, but actually the functionality is quite good. Now this model that Toyota Canada gave me is the uh, XSE tester model. Of course, it's fully loaded with a two-tone two paint scheme, 19 inch alloy wheels, 18 inch standard on the uh, uh, base trim of the SE, uh, LEDs and all kinds of other touches and you can go on the website and get a list of all the uh, numer too numerous to mention features on this. The, uh, this has the premium technology package as well, which gives you a nice moon roof, so you get some, uh, some light in there, and that seems to be common on everybody, an 11 speaker JBL system. It does support Apple CarPlay. Uh, and uh, Android Auto, of course, which is the standard, even has a heads-up display, which is a nice feature. Now, Toyota is all about safety as well, so as are most manufacturers, so, and they have a lot of things in here called their Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, 
which is a package that combines uh, sa standard safety suites, including pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, full speed range dynamic radar cruise control, auto high beams, lane departure alert, steering assist, with steering assist, blind spot monitoring, and lane tracing assist. Also, the XSE model has something called intelligence clearance sonar. I haven't tested that. I guess it'll beep at you if, you, if you're going on something too big. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, safety features work pretty good. I'm going to take you for a drive in a second. I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the lane keeping that I've tested uh, when I was on the highway with this vehicle. I did want to mention cargo capacity in these vehicles are really nice. You put the seats down, you get up to 949 liters or 33 and a half cubic feet of car uh, cargo room. Plenty of room to store stuff and haul pets and hockey gear and soccer gear and all that kind of stuff. So again, the size is, uh, is a good size vehicle. It's not overly big and not overly small. All right, so let's go for a drive and I'll talk a little bit about uh, how it drives. All right, so let me give you some of the driving, my, my driving impressions, excuse me, on this 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. Um, as I mentioned, you know, this is very much more like a, a truck feel to it. You sit pretty high, it's got good visibility. Um, so it's certainly a lot different than the Model 3 getting in and out of that, that's for sure. This is much easier. But uh, it is more truck-like than I would say car-like for sure. Um, even with the, the battery um, in, you know, in the uh, uh, floor, plan, floor pan of the car in the lower part, um, so you get more weight there. Uh, you know, it has a decent center of gravity, but it's certainly not a performance car that you're going to throw around curves anytime soon. Uh, it's it probably still a little top heavy like most SUVs are. Now, that aren't full electric, but that for sure. Now, so uh, barring that, um, I've been driving it around for a few days, as I mentioned, put a, put some, uh, only a few hundred, a uh, little bit of kilometers on it, not a whole lot, but the, the impressions have been pretty good. Again, it's a Toyota product, so it's going to be solid. Um, it's going to run well and do its thing. Now, I've been trying to eke out um, the EV mileage only uh, to see what I could get. And as I mentioned, what those ratings are. Overall, driving is, is easy. You know, if, if you're used to a RAV4 or this type of SUV, this class, you're going to get in and just feel right at home and go. Uh, from a user perspective, everything's easy to use. It took me uh, two minutes just to find all the controls, set everything up for me, and away I went. It's a very nicely imported interior, uh, a pointed interior, and very comfortable as well. Um, you know, as far as the lane keeping, uh, here's a bit of a video when I did some uh, lane keep assist on the highway. Have a look at this. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job of staying in the lane. Um, I found at times that it did try to hug the the um, the left side of the lane markers um, a little bit more than I thought it would. Not much ping ponging that we see from some of these single camera based systems, but all right, the uh, spacing radar worked quite well for the adaptive cruise control and so forth. So all in all. Uh, a fairly solid uh, offering from Toyota on uh, lane keeping and adaptive cruise. So drivability in EV mode is uh, is very easy in this vehicle. It has all the dashes to tell you what your state of charge is on the battery. Um, and as I said, I've been getting pretty good mileage out of this, considering that we've had the temperatures going up and down uh, wild over the last couple of days. You know, today it's uh, minus four, but the wind's really howling, so we're getting a minus 15. Uh, or even a little bit more uh, Celsius wind chill. So it's still performing adamantly, telling me I just juiced it up again. I'm at 40, I was at 50 kilometers in the garage, so it's not bad. Um, very comfortable drive. I'm in EV mode now. You can tell it's very quiet um, in EV mode. When the engine does kick in, that's when some of the sound starts. So you hear the engine, uh, especially if you floor it and want to get some power going, you hear that engine rev. Um, it's not the quietest thing, but it's not going to bother you that much either. It's just something you notice, especially going from an all-electric to a plug-in hybrid. 
So it's got otherwise, you know, the seat, the heated seats work well. It's got the heated steering wheel. All that winter convenience works well. There, again, the regenerative braking is on the low end on this. There are ways to adjust it to get a little bit more to eke out some more range. So my overall driving impressions, and as I figured this car would be, it's really designed for users that just want to get in and don't want to be worried about EV hybrids, all the technology around it. They just want to be able to plug it in and go. And it does default the EV mode right from the start as long as it's got juice in the battery. So that's a good sign because for users that don't really want to think about it, and again, these are people that we're trying to, hopefully you're watching and you drive an ICE vehicle today and you're thinking about an EV and not sure about all electric, then the biggest battery plug-in hybrid electric you can get is a great offering. And I think this, this has a good uh, this is a good offering in that space. You get in, you just drive. It defaults to battery mode, uses as much juice as you can off the battery before engaging the engine. So at least, you know, you can eke out as much uh, zero emissions out of this as you can with those modes. You can change modes and it has a hold mode as well. You can take your foot off the brake. Um, it's not a one pedal driving. It doesn't slow you down enough, but certainly a hold mode. So it's got some of those conveniences that we're used to from an EV now into these cars. So all in all, a well-appointed vehicle that drives like a small truck. You know, you have to remember that it's got good interior space and so forth. So a good experience. And I hope that that helps uh, from a uh, just giving you a sense of how this thing is to drive. So speaking of pricing, this thing comes in at just under uh, 53,000 MSRP, but uh, loaded up, you get it into the 58, 59,000 range quite easily. Uh, so, you know, it is a little on the pricey side, but uh, this is the XSE, uh, the top of the line model, so there's a lot of stuff. Again, as I mentioned, it does qualify for some of the incentives here in Canada and potentially some incentives in the U.S. and other parts of the world as well. All right, well, I hope you uh, liked a little bit of that driving now. And in, in summary, you know, I, I'm not a... a not a, a true lover of plug-in hybrids, as you folks know. However, I don't hate them either. I'm kind of in the middle ground. I can see where there's a use case for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, and I know that a lot of people don't want to take that leap of faith into an all-electric. I get it and I understand. The, the Prime at least has a decent enough battery here uh, that Toyota supplied to get you some decent daily range. You know, I was, uh, I drove um, uh, only a, a short distances in the couple days that I've had this vehicle, 132 kilometers, uh, 96 of that was in EV only mode and that's for some temperatures that were as low as minus 10 to as high as plus a 5 what we had yesterday here so we've been up and down so that's pretty good you know in the summertime it probably is not going to be hard to get 65 68 the full 68 kilometers as it's rated for that 42 miles and I think for a lot of daily driving use cases it's a very acceptable vehicle for that uh, if you have the ability to plug in and recharge every night, you can run on battery only mode for a good portion of your daily use driving in most situations. And I think I give it a plus for that. I think the battery size is good. It's big enough. It's not that small where it's unusable. And I think Toyota has done okay. I, of course, I'd love to see a bigger battery and I'd love to see an all electric version of this, even which would even be better. 
But for those that don't want to take that leap of faith, as I mentioned, and that still need the gas, the engine will kick in and charge the battery and you can drive for another five, 600 kilometers on the gas only. So you can get quite a lot of range out of this and take away any range anxiety expectations. So do I think the uh, Toyota RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I give it a thumbs up. As I mentioned, I think it's got good enough battery range for most daily use cases. It is on the pricey side. Uh, the functionality, uh, the drivability is okay. There's nothing on this vehicle wowed me, to be honest with you folks. It was just a good A to B purposeful vehicle that was comfortable. And ergonomically wise, it's very comfortable to seat four people, five people in a pinch and with the cargo space. Good all around people hauler. So yes, uh, good job on Toyota for coming up with something at least that has a decent battery pack. I would have been very disappointed had this been a lot smaller. So I do want to thank Toyota Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for a few days, especially still we're still under lockdown in some cases, so I can't really go too far. That's why my mileage is not that far, not, not that high. I've only been driving kind of locally. Uh, adhering to the public guidelines, of course. So hope you enjoyed my look-see here at the 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. Uh, and, you know, if you're thinking about it, uh, go for a test drive and check it out. But definitely, if, if, if it works for you in your use case that you can drive in all-electric mode for most of the time, it's a winner by me. And that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Of course, everybody, thank you for watching on YouTube. And uh, if you have some comments, if you own this vehicle, let me know uh, how you've liked it so far. It's been, if it, the range has been what you've expected. Always love uh, hearing comments or reading comments, and, and I try to respond to each and every one of them. Of course, humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Um, you know, I, I can't do a lot of this stuff without you guys, and I'm always very humbled uh, when I look at the Patreon, and I get a lot of feedback from them as well, so I thank you for that. Of course, please adhere to, uh, continue to adhere to public health guidelines wherever you are in the globe, and uh, we are going to get through this pandemic. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's pretty bright today for me, but it's there, so I wish you all the best to try to get there and, and do that. Continue to watch out what's going on in the EV revolution landscape. Lots of things happening. Hope you enjoyed the show, and until the next time, everybody again, stay Stay safe, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Welcome to the this edition of the EV Revolution Show. How's the lights and color? How's it look? Let's see. Everybody and their mother has to come when I'm filming. Never fails. Never fails.